1,000 thank yous to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a free Skillshare premium membership trial so you can explore your creativity. So Instagram Reels has been killing it lately, and it's even doing well for me personally. I'm gaining more followers, I'm getting more views and more likes just through my Instagram Reels. And one of the biggest questions that I get from you guys is, how do you make your Reels look so high quality, so sharp, crispy, my personal favorite, tasty? Well, funny you should ask, I'll show you. Intro. <laughs> Salutations everybody, Benjamin Brandon here. Welcome back to another Instagram filmmaking tutorial. It's another tutorial, I'm staying consistent on the tubes. In today's video, I will show you my six step process and how I achieve high quality reels. The first thing I think about when I create Instagram reels is to make sure I shoot 4K. For me, this rule applies on my phone and on my camera. But Ben, doesn't Instagram compress the heck out of our uploads to 480p? Yes. However, I'm advising you to shoot 4K for this reason. Because Instagram compresses our video so much, we need to do our best to upload as much resolution and quality as we can. Think of it like this. Let's say you upload a video in 1080p. That is a decent resolution and a decent amount of quality, but understand once you upload, you're already losing some of that quality and therefore you're giving Instagram, well, not that much. Whereas 4K, you have a bunch of resolution to upload. And yes, as you still lose quality uploading to Instagram, you still provide a good amount of quality to Instagram even after the upload process. Even if you're not exporting 4K, this strategy is super helpful. So the more you give your video, the less Instagram will be able to take away. The second thing I do when I create my reels is to shoot in specific frame rates. Now most creators don't shoot 30p to create a cinematic sequence. They use 24. But reverting to 30p does two things that 24p doesn't. The first is it's a bit sharper than 24p by definition. 24 frames a second allows you to capture a lot of motion blur, which is essentially why it looks so cinematic. And adding six more frames to that going to 30p provides less motion blur, which gives you a little bit sharper of an image. The other benefit to 30p is that you're actually able to slow it down a little bit, about 70 to 80%. And in doing so, you get a more fluid visual. It also supports internal stabilization for your editing software. Because you're slowing the frames down or stretching them out a little bit, you're able to analyze a lot, so you get more stable footage. So whenever I'm talking to the camera or a roll, I shoot in 30p. And I'll get into exactly why I do that with my next tip. When it comes to 60 frames a second, you wanna use this for your B-roll. This is how you get the slow motion, fluid, buttery, crispy, tasty, whatever adjective you wanna put it on footage. This is how YouTubers, filmmakers, anyone who wants to make slow motion cinematic footage shoots B-roll in 60 frames a second. The more frames you have, the more you're able to slow down your footage, the smoother it looks. Yes, again, that is both for your phone and for your camera. And with all of that, the third step in my process is to edit all of that on a 24p timeline. Now, this is technically breaking some traditional editing rules, but the benefits that I just mentioned in the last tip all apply to a 24 frame timeline. A 24 frame timeline allows you to slow down 30 frames a second footage to that 70 to 80% I was mentioning. Now with your B-roll and 60 frames a second, slowing it down on a 24 timeline looks so good, you would wanna slap your mama and ask her for a biscuit. I don't know where I come up with these things, guys. You can slow down 60p footage by 50% in a matter of seconds, and that will get you that buttery smooth B-roll that you're wanting on a 24 frame timeline. Traditionally, the frame rate you shoot in is the frame rate you edit in, which yeah, if you're shooting a movie or a documentary, sure, that makes sense. But we gotta get innovative when it comes to Instagram and vert content. Next, it's time to make the footage look pretty. And that's the fourth thing that I do is color correct and color grade. Now for some of you, that process may be difficult because you do everything on your phone. My advice to you would be to delicately use any filters that come with the editing software that you're using on your phone. But for those who wanna take it up a notch, here's what I do. I start with color correction. Now color correction is a technical process whereas color grading is more of a creative process. I'll start with the native tools that Final Cut gives me. Since I shoot in log, I'll drop down shadows, play around with midtones, and I usually bring up highlights. I'll then go into a color curve and spice it up some there with pretty precise exposure edits depending on how the footage looks. I'll then go to my vector scope and adjust colors that way as well. That usually supports giving me a more punchier yet realistic image. And then I'll pop a LUT in there using the MLUT plugin, never really using 100% of the LUTs, just because sometimes they're too powerful. 
and then tweak until I think everything looks pretty. Now, funny enough, I didn't really know how to use all these tools in Final Cut to enhance my color in my image in general until I took this class on Skillshare, Color Correction for Beginners by Benjamin Halsell. After taking this class, I actually took this class like two times, I was introduced to a bunch of color correction tools I didn't know existed in Final Cut Pro. The biggest takeaway I got from this class was learning how to fix sunset images, because as I knew how to expose for it, I always had a problem trying to get it just right. And in Benjamin's class, I learned how to properly adjust these certain colors and parameters using waveforms, which I never used ever. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching premium classes. So you as the creator can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Knowledge is power, y'all. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. But because Skillshare is sponsoring today's video, you can try it for free simply by clicking the link in the description below. So thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and hooking you guys up with the free trial. So after I'm done making my footage all pretty using vector scopes, I then export it using a high bitrate preset in Final Cut. In Final Cut, I use the Apple Devices 4K preset, which not only provides a high bitrate, but allows you to export in an H.264 codec, which is like super important for every platform like ever. I select the format to computer to amplify that bitrate, use the H.264 better quality compression, and choose the highest resolution possible. And boom, that's how you get your masterpiece out of your computer, onto your phone, in the highest quality possible. The last thing I do before uploading a reel is to shoot a high quality thumbnail, meaning take a high quality still photo, whether if it's on your phone or on your camera, it's going to be better than a screenshot of your video. I'll pop that sucker in the Lightroom, add one of my Benjamin Brandon presets on it, get that teal, get that orange. I usually tweak the color curve here as well, get it to my liking and export at 100% resolution. That is the most important part. <laughs> For mobile creators, I would use cool apps like Snapseed or even Lightroom on mobile to enhance that photo enough to make people want to click on it. I can't stress the importance of a thumbnail because it's the first thing that people see when they decide whether or not they wanna watch your video from your feed. And all of that to create this. I hope this video answered the big question of how I make my reels because I literally showed you everything I do. And for more Instagram, IGTV, and Reels tutorials, crush that subscribe button, slap that like button, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram, DM me, let's connect, and I, my beautiful vert friends, will see you on the next one. I'm out.